So why is it a good idea to learn programming? Well, duh, to get a job, obviously, and let's not underplay it. In many books and articles which try to persuade people to pick up programming, there's a common theme of tiptoeing around this answer, because authors feel that saying bluntly, do it for the money, is not good enough. So they first enumerate other reasons and then mention that yes, there's a lot of demand on the job market for programmers. Like for example Jeff Lawson, the CEO of Twilio, who on the Signal conference in San Francisco said that code is creative, it's more than just math, it's art. And he is right in a way. Programming can be creative. It can be a way to broaden your horizons. It can be a way to contribute to society. And it can be an art. But all that shouldn't eclipse one simple truth. Programming is a very good career path. There's a huge demand for programmers around the world. We are paid well, we are more often than not a full employed, or we choose to be freelancers because it suits us, not because we are forced by shady employers. And even though having a job is never a given, we can be pretty sure to find a new one in a reasonable amount of time if the current one fails. You may think that do this for money might sound off-putting, but try to look at it this way. A good steady job means that you can support yourself, your family, charities and causes you care about, and still have time and means for other activities. Chasing your dreams and living a good life is much easier when you don't have to worry about your bills. So if you think programming can be something for you, give it a try. You don't have to commit your whole life to it. Learn it, find a good job in IT, and make rules. This much time for programming, that much time for things you care about. Okay, you may say, but if everyone becomes a programmer, or at least a lot of people, won't it make programming a worse career path than it is now? After all, with a greater supply of software developers, the competition will be greater, average earnings will go down, and it will be easier for the employer to find someone else for my place. So I won't feel so secure anymore. Besides, all IT companies reside in big cities where living is expensive, so I will have to worry about the bills, and I will have to worry about having a job. And my answer to that is yes, but maybe in a hundred years. Yeah, the job market works according to the rules of supply and demand, but neither of them is constant. The demand for programmers is rising even faster than the supply. Look around. Think about how the world was like 20 years ago, and how is it now? All the high tech which exists now, but wasn't here a decade or two ago, means that someone programmed it. It's not only your laptop and your cell phone. Everywhere around you, there is hardware and software running on that hardware. TV sets, fridges, cars, public transport, bank accounts, cinema tickets, weather forecast. There's more and more of it every year. We're maybe not yet at the point where all the physical jobs are taken by robots, but we're pretty advanced when it comes to replacing physical work with the work of a pilot, a person behind a cockpit of a big specialized machine, or in a seat with a joystick in hand controlling a drone. And between the muscles made of steel and the brain made of uh, jelly, there is software. We're also getting closer to having all the reputable clerk and accounting work automatized, our interactions with other people augmented by social media, and all our duties and requirements as citizens uh, streamlined. And even though the number of programmers on the market is growing, the need for them, for us, is growing even faster. But wait, you may say. If this is happening to physical workers and telemarketers, won't it also happen to programmers as well? Indeed. Every few years, we experience some kind of a breakthrough in programming. New paradigms come into use, and they make programming easier, more concise, quicker. For example, when Scala was introduced and gained ground in IT, it was one such a breakthrough in conciseness of the code. So you may think that soon, programming won't be needed at all. Back in 2006, when I was coding video games, that belief was something common. The company I worked for just started using the Jupyter EX engine, famous for being the core of FEAR, a video game very popular in 2005. An engine is a very complex tool used for making video games development easier. It encapsulates the physics of the game, artificial intelligence, the user interface, and many other things. Until then, we were programming all these things. Now, we were supposed to focus solely on level design and graphics, and everything else would be taken care of by Jupyter EX. Guess what? The number of video game developers increased since then. Engines simply don't cover everything programmers do. Moreover, they often need to be modified for a given project, or some parts of them are left unused, and instead the company writes its own substitutes. And of course, engines themselves have to be written by someone. Let's jump back to 2019. Nowadays, people put a lot of hope in machine learning. 
This is the next iteration of an artificial intelligence hype. Until now, every previous iteration was followed by a so-called AI winter, when investors became disillusioned and stopped putting money in AI research for some time. But okay, this time it really looks good. Shut up, Morpheus. In very simple terms, we can say that machine learning is a concept that we can have an artificial neural network, some input data for it, and some expectations about what the output should be. We let the network digest the data, we get the results, and we compare it with what we expect. Then we tweak the network so that next time the results will be closer to our expectations. The big idea here is that instead of programming our software, we can build AI and teach it what should be done. The teaching process is, of course, much more automatic than when you try to make a bunch of people work together and code stuff. And I don't say that this can't happen. In fact, I'm pretty sure it can. Still, even if, it will happen only in distant future and we'll probably experience more AI winters in the meantime. Right now, and during the following few decades, machine learning is yet another field of IT, and that means that more, not less, programmers are needed because someone has to actually program the AI. All this doesn't mean there are no pitfalls. There's quite a bunch of them, and I will talk about them in future episodes, like overworking, stress, health problems, burnout, and frequent relocation. Programmers find jobs mainly in big cities, yeah, that's true, around the world. If you don't live in one of them already, you have to be ready to relocate. That means a lot of stress, strained social life, the need to plan everything very carefully, especially if you're in a relationship and or have children. And yes, it is possible to work remotely, but that's usually an option only after some time. If you're a junior, the company will probably require you to show up at the office every day. Only much later, when they trust you and or when you're experienced and valuable to them, you may renegotiate your contract and say you want to live in a hut in the woods or just go back to your hometown where it's quiet, the air is clean, and you don't have to pay some insane money for renting an apartment the size of a dog kennel. But there are obstacles on every career path. They shouldn't discourage you. All in all, programming is a stable, well-paid job, and it can also be interesting and fun. In comparison to many other possibilities, it's pretty awesome. During this video, I have mentioned a few times that in future videos, I would like to talk more about this or that. I'd like to make it a common pattern. I imagine in the future videos I will also mention videos which were already released, mine, but also made by others. When a video comes out, I will try to put links to it in the previous episodes where I mentioned it. I see it as a good way to plan ahead, but I don't want it to be the only source of ideas. If there is anything you would like me to talk about, leave a comment.